Today was the first CES keynote by LG, so let me tell you what they showed, what they told, and remember this all happened right in Las Vegas. Let's get started. Something that caught my attention is that LG, from their first keynote speech by their CEO, made it clear that they are changing their perspective or their vision a little bit, so to speak, as they move from being a home appliance company to a smart living company. That's what they expressed in their initial speech, saying that they're expanding their company to have better customer experiences. And then they started talking a little bit about artificial intelligence. But also something curious is that LG has decided to somehow rename the term AI, which as you know stands for artificial intelligence, but they have decided in some strange way to name it affectionate intelligence. And the thing is that they said that they don't just want to have an analysis like artificial intelligence does, they want to also be able to understand your emotions. So they said that with this they can improve the consumer experience, but it all depends on the size of the data. And LG is a company that has over 700 million LG devices around the world in use, and all of those devices have multiple sensors. So if you give it authorization and permission, it's going to use and leverage all that information to be able to better understand your context and better understand your persona as well. They said that everything will be able to interact and recognize your patterns and even your mood thanks to your tone of voice or facial expression. They said that this is the clearest differentiation on LG's part. And they talked a little bit about LG AI Brain, which is their own language model, which is like their own artificial intelligence engine, to put it in a very non-technical way. So they define their affectionate intelligence as an artificial intelligence that is not only able to have everything ready in real time, but also to work in sync with absolutely all your devices to what they've called orchestral intelligence. In a way, the truth is that LG invented several terms in this conference and they also want to keep the whole experience secure. So they introduced LG Shield, which is not just a software thing, but a philosophy, so to speak, where LG wants everything to run directly on your devices without the need for all your information to travel to a server, thus keeping your privacy. Then someone else came on stage and asked the question about whether your smart home is really a smart home or is it a bit of a mess because of so many devices you have connected. With that, they said they were announcing a change in perspective, reinventing LG ThinQ, which so far was their Internet of Things device platform. And now they say it's a complete smart living platform, as they want LG to be able to be proactive and not just reactive. I mean, it's not just going to wait for the user to say do something, but based on all the sensors, it's going to recognize your environment and other things. And the artificial intelligence itself will be able to decide if it needs to enable something in your home. In this revamped LG ThinQ, we're also going to have a new way to chat with our devices to ask them to do something and not just through buttons or user interface. We will also have a three-way view of our home to accommodate all the devices we have and present a new smart home hub that will be precisely like the brain of your whole house where all devices can be connected. And this device will not send any information to a cloud, but everything will be processed directly in it to gain privacy. In addition, they announced that LG ThinQ has become an open platform and is going to have APIs available for developers, which was something completely necessary because LG ThinQ so far was a bit of a closed experience with few compatible devices. But by announcing this, it will surely make many more devices able to be added to this platform. They also announced LG ThinQ Up, which is kind of an improvement on the platform they were already working on their home appliances. Through this, you are going to receive an improved service as they want you to practically not have to do anything in your home. This is a kind of service that will ensure that you simply buy your product, but LG is going to take care of all the transportation, installation and maintenance of your appliance. In fact, they announced that there is a new subscription for this, but it wasn't very clear what the terms are that it will work on. But after this little introduction that was going a bit slow, they presented one of their most revolutionary products of the moment, although its name has not pleased me so much. It is called LG Smart Home AI Agent. It is a kind of small robot that is able to navigate throughout your home as it has a transport by two wheels and has a small screen that projects out 
eyes with different facial expressions. It can talk to you, it has a microphone, camera and other sensors, so it is able to detect humidity. And in general, let's say it is able to understand your house and understand you. At the conference, they gave some examples of uses that this robot could have, like reminding you of the medicines you need to take in the morning, or also greeting you when you get home after going to work, even checking your house in general to see if something is wrong or if everything is okay. And it can also make emergency calls in case a family member suffers a fall or an accident at home. At the moment, they have not announced any price or availability of this little robot, and this is something very common within CES. Many companies present very innovative products or concepts, but do not actually launch them for sale yet. Something they do plan to do soon is the Universal UpKit, which is a kind of adaptation to make all their appliances usable for people who need a device adapted to their capabilities. That is, if there is someone who perhaps does not have good mobility in their hand, they can adapt the washing machine or any other LG product so that they can use it more easily. This is a very positive initiative. Then another person came in to talk about the TVs, mentioning that artificial intelligence is one of the key factors to be the best in projecting images through these panels. They said that LG is the only one that continues to make new artificial intelligence processors and they presented the new Alpha 11, which according to LG's information has four times more capacity than the last generation, so it will be able to improve the whole image, sound and all the parameters of the TV so that the content you are watching you can enjoy it as much as possible. They also mentioned that WebOS, which is their operating system, has been on the market for 10 years. And they briefly highlighted LG Channels, which is an option that LG gives its users to access content for free. And they also announced the availability of new applications on their platform, such as Udemy, to access a lot of courses. And they also said that there are many other new games that you can interact with also through voice and through the Magic Remote. So their platform is growing more and more in capabilities. In fact, they have also mentioned that they are the first to introduce Dolby Vision and Filmmaker mode simultaneously. And also regarding support, they made it clear that their TVs from 2022 will have updates for five years. Then they said that LG is an open company that likes to work and collaborate with other companies. And for that, a person from Google also entered to announce that now LG TVs from the 2024 models will have Chromecast fully integrated. If you did not know in models from 2023 backwards, although you can do wireless screen projection with various devices and even with iPhone, it was not really compatible with Chromecast, so devices with pure Android were not able to project their screen. But after this decision, the possibilities are expanded in LG TVs that also become compatible with Google Home, with greater integration. In fact, they also mentioned that they were going to update LG TVs that are in hotels, so that through Chromecast it would be much easier for guests to send some content to their TVs without conflicting with TVs in other rooms. And after all this came another important moment. LG officially unveiled their smart TV, which they called LG Signature OLED T, of course T for transparent. In the presentation, the transparent TV was making its entrance, showing there the moon with an animation in the background, all very artistic with galaxies, stars and more elements. And in technical matters, it is a 4K TV that through a button on the control can become transparent or can also become opaque. You decide how you want it to behave and they have emphasized that its use will be as to maintain the visualization of your spaces. They point out that the bigger your TV is, you have a bigger black space in your home that takes away from the visualization of your entire room. So with the arrival of these transparent TVs, LG intends to focus on people who are very detailed and like art and this type of aesthetics, as it also has the wireless OLED technology LG presented since last year. That is to say that if you want to connect any HDMI accessory like a game console or anything else, you will not have to carry the cables behind the TV, but you have a separate cube where all the connectors go and all this signal is transmitted wirelessly to the OLED panel. So the design is extremely clean and nice. Obviously this is a segment of the market that I think is very small, but anyway LG had to innovate on something and they have succeeded. 
They showed a video just showing some use cases where a TV of this style could be placed, but it looks very focused on luxury. Then in their conference, they started talking about the automotive industry, and honestly, it was the most boring part of the conference with very technical stuff about their new projects. But they shared LG's vision that they have regarding vehicles because they say that they practically imagine that it is a house on wheels. They intend that when you get into your car, it will recognize you through your face and with this it will load its own user interface. In addition, passengers will also be able to manage the house or feed pets and the like from the vehicle's screens. Even in the back, they imagine that children could have their own screens with an entertainment center compatible with WebOS, which is the same operating system that LG uses in their TVs. They also imagine how the driver could be notified when children have fallen asleep in the back seats so they can take action. And finally, they talked about their developments in charging for electric vehicles and how they are going to open a plant in Texas to manufacture these chargers. And obviously with this in the United States, they intend to extend the entire charging network for this type of vehicles that are becoming more and more popular. And that was the end of the conference. I hope you like this summary. If so, you know you can let us know and we'll see you next time.